Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short and succinct revision presentation looking at the market structure known as monopolistic competition. So monopolistic competition is a form of imperfect competition, and actually it's quite a realistic market structure. We find it in loads of examples. If you take any given busy town or city, there'll be plenty of sandwich bars and coffee shops, independent uh, businesses operating. One of my particular favourites at the moment is the craft beer sector, where you have a huge amount of choice, lots of local operators uh, competing for people's custom. Monopolistic competition is similar to perfect competition, but actually more realistic because the products are differentiated as opposed to standardised and homogenous, as we assume in perfect competition. Now, because firms are selling differentiated products, that means they have a downward sloping demand curve, the AR curve and the MR curve slope downwards. And that gives the firm, the business, some control over their products. They have some pricing power, but that pricing power will be limited. It's likely the demand curve would be price elastic uh, because of the range of choice. The cross price elasticity of demand will be pretty high. Monopolistic competition is a favourite exam question because there are so many different examples of industries where this happens, from shoe repairs to craft beer making, from hairdressing salons. Yes, there are some national chains like Supercuts and things, but actually most hairdressing salons are small operators, dry cleaning companies, sandwich bars, um, nightclubs and pubs. So loads of examples that you can choose. There's actually quite often a, a little bit of a grey area between monopolistic competition where you have many firms, each with a relatively small market share, and oligopoly, where you have many firms, but actually it's dominated by a few big suppliers. So look to see that subtle difference uh, based on the data you might get in a, in a data response question. The short-run equilibrium diagram for monopolistic competition is essentially the same as monopoly, so that's easy to revise, but I would suggest and recommend to you in the exam that you draw the demand curve and associated MR curve as fairly price elastic. Uh, this uh, diagram here shows that the firm, if it's a profit maximizer, it doesn't have to be, of course, can make some super normal profit as shown in the green, in the gray area. The level of profit the firm makes can be anything, actually, it just depends fundamentally on cost. So the short run dynamics, Quick summary, many producers, many consumers, low industry concentration ratio, of course, is a measure of key measure of market power. Uh, typically in this market, there'll be lots of non-price competition. And uh, it's, it's fairly easy for customers to switch from one product to another. Uh, cru crucially, as we head into the long run analysis, the barriers to entry and exit are low, no sunk costs. This allows firms to respond to changing profit signals, the price mechanism in operation. And any level of profit is possible in the short run. Here's our profit diagram again from the short run. Any level of profit is possible. It depends fundamentally on your fixed and your variable costs. Now, the long run diagram is often a tricky one to draw. You need to be able to show that the firm is in equilibrium in this case, at output Q2, charging a price P2, but that, that price is just tangential, just touching the average cost curve. What happens is that new firms come into the market, that drives down the demand for existing products, assuming a fairly static total market demand. And the demand curve will shift to the left until it's just tangential to the average cost curve. I've drawn my demand curve again as a little bit more elastic than the one before. Uh, because of more firms, more products. Therefore, there's more choice, more substitutes in the market. Uh, there's something called the principle of minimum differentiation. This is the idea that it's often quite rational for businesses in these kind of industries to when entering a market to make their products as close as possible to their rivals. Um, classic example, you know, if you're selling chilled soups, for example, that's a big market at the moment, or protein shakes. Um, fundamentally, the products are the same, uh, but there's, there's differentiation in terms of packaging and branding and perhaps a little bit of ingredients difference as well. Here is the long run diagram where the firm is just making normal profit. It's worth drawing and practicing this one ahead of the exam. It's a tricky one. 
How do we get to the long run? Uh, there are no barriers to entry. Therefore, that means that there are new suppliers out there waiting to come into the market with new differentiated products. If profits are high, as new firms enter the market, the demand curve for any existing firm will shift to the left. And that will shift to the left until it's tangential to the average cost curve. MR curve, of course, will shift as well. At the equilibrium in the long run in this market, the firm is at its profit maximizing output, MR meets MC, but it's making only normal profit. That's the key aspect of this market. Crucial question helps the evaluation. Is this kind of industry economically efficient? Is it good from the point of view of efficiency and welfare? On the one hand, if we think about allocative efficiency, prices remain above marginal cost in equilibrium. But uh, there's so much choice in the market that actually the demand curve is fairly price elastic. And therefore, the, the pricing power of firms isn't as high as it would be with a monopoly, for example. So the extraction of consumer surplus is less than not turning it into extra um, supernormal profit. What about productive efficiency? Well, there's lots of competition, so you'd expect fairly limited X inefficiencies. But one argument is there are so many products in the market that oftentimes that market can become saturated with so many differentiated goods and services. And that could, in theory, limit the scope for economies of scale. At least in an oligopoly, you have a few firms that are dominating the market and achieving those big economies of scale and reductions in cost. What about dynamic efficiency? Well, uh, strong non-price competition is a feature of this market. So we would expect to see loads of product innovation, although possibly not fundamental innovation, just sort of iterative innovation. So the next version of an app or a slightly different ingredient to a product or a sandwich. However, uh, we know in the long run, this market, the profits are competed away. So perhaps the limited profitability may hold back um, research and development spending. Uh, and I think a key point is social efficiency. You know, we're, we're bombarded these days with news about plastic pollution and waste. Um, and there's a big issue, particularly when it comes at retail level, to the extent to which uh, packaging is part of the product differentiation. So you can make possibly an argument for saying that heavy spending on packaging could be damaging, could lead to some negative externalities, particularly if it leads to higher waste, which ultimately much of which goes to, to landfill and isn't recycled. Key exam point, just to finish with, when you get a question on market structure, oligopoly, monopoly, um, monopolistic competition, this video, contestable markets, it is always, always a good idea to talk about different types of economic efficiency. That will help both your analysis and crucially, it will certainly help your evaluation. Thank you for joining in this short video on monopolistic competition.